Yes, yeah, your boy Crypto Blood, and welcome to another episode of My Two Satoshis. It is June 29th, almost July. Wow, this year is going by fast. Crucial conflict. Shout out to my man Air Coins Lee for the song request, one of my YouTube premium members. This is a classic right here. Crucial conflict. Hey, shout out to Shy Town for that one. What's good, people? Welcome to another episode. And today, this is a subject I've been covering on my channel. I've been telling you guys to keep your eyes on it. It's a fastly growing industry, the industry of quantum computers, qubits. They're going to be the future for all processing, especially for supercomputers. What does this mean for Bitcoin? This is a serious issue in my book. It should be on yours, and you should keep a very close eye out on this. But out of Bitcoin.com, crypto proponents discuss Honeywell's new six qubit quantum computer. Now, this thing is two times faster than what was uh, posted for Google and IBM. And I covered the Google announcement maybe about four months ago. They announced quantum supremacy. And just look how fast that has been eclipsed. This Honeywell machine is two times faster than that. We'll skim through the article and I'll give you my two Satoshis on it as far as what this means for Bitcoin and its 256 encryption method. Also, Ethereum 2.0 multi-client testnet Altona has been released. I'll give you guys the rundown on that. Lastly, Bitcoin wrapped on the Ethereum blockchain now reaches over $101 million. I told you guys about WBTC when it came out last year. And I told you then these are the types of methods and strategies that will be used to scale Bitcoin. It won't be the Lightning Network, guys. This is what you will see. EOS IL even has a better one. It's even faster than what can be done on wrapped BTC. But this is a milestone to say the least and one i wanted to definitely give you guys a heads up on all these articles on today's episode of my two satoshis but before we start if you guys find these types of videos informative make sure you like share and subscribe and click that bell to receive more videos like this and while i've got your attention i want to let you know about dudex the new promo that i got going on with them i tailor made this for you guys all my subscribers you just have to be subscribed to my channel and use the link in the description below and what you will get an opportunity to do is win 50 usdt tokens every two weeks i'm doing a drawing whoever has the highest volume in trading you will win so get over to dudex.com actually use the link in the description below sign up and enter to win that's all you have to do be a subscriber sign up and i'll make an announcement every two weeks so stay tuned and look out for the next winner check them out link in the description below before we get into things let's take a look at the heat map for today bitcoin is up slightly almost one percent to nine thousand one hundred and sixty one bucks ethereum is up also one percent we've got uh xrp up a third of a percent litecoin up almost one percent point eight percent to forty one dollars and seventy one cents we've got tezos up 1.6 percent today eos down uh, a third of a percent to two dollars and 36 cents binance up just over a half percent right now to fifteen dollars and 41 cents cro token you guys know i'm very happy about this investment here i've been staking and appreciating the value it's been going crazy the last few days i think it's up 10 percent so i'm telling you guys you need to look at crypto.com's cro token for the staking benefits 18 percent if you stake for i think three months uh, that's the max you can do that is why that coin is going ham right now and it will continue to go up and up and up it's i, be, I believe in the top 10 coins now it's just crazy to see and uh shout out to, to crypto.com for the success with that they build a great ecosystem around that token which is drawing a lot of value there and i'll have a link in the description below for that but let's jump over to dudex.com's chart and look at where we are with things uh we went long on ethereum yesterday and are up nicely now with that but if you take a look at where we are with a trend line basically at this point if we fall below 9060 bucks somewhere around there you can just safely say 9000 right if we break 9000 i think we're going to roll over and that is on bitcoin so that's something you can kind of keep your eye on and maybe put an alert on the trend line in trading view you can do that you can put alerts on trend lines in trading view a very very neat feature so that's where we are with things it looks like we're breaching that last v-shape area on bitcoin so if we can keep that momentum going we may try to test the next one which is around here ninety three hundred dollars so we'll see what happens first article though for today out coin gate is the new ethereum 2.0 multi-client testnet 
Altona. So it looks like in a new milestone for Ethereum, the Altona network simulator has been rolled out. However, the main difference this time around is that it will be multi-client and four clients that is. So it'll have the Prismatic Labs one, the Sigma Prime, Nimbus, and Pegasus all involved in this one. Depending on the success of this test net, there will be one more test net before the official launch of Ethereum 2.0 beacon chain mainnet. So that's still one step removed from being fully live, specifically since 2.0 will be multifaceted, introducing on-chain scaling solutions through sharding and proof of stake. How these different clients will work together on a new blockchain will highlight how various clients upon launch of the beacon chain will join hands in enabling rollout of the new approach to networking and consensus. It says here the Altona network is only the third of its series of test networks leading to the beacon chain. Ordinarily a test network mimics the workings of the main network. Since all the clients are required for the success of the beacon chain, the fact that Ethereum introduced different clients in this test net represents progress and a confidence boost for Ethereum holders. So just wanted to give you guys a heads up on that. And I still stand by what I said last year, early last year, that we wouldn't see Ethereum 2.0 until 2021 or later. And currently with the progress that I'm seeing, I'm thinking mid 2021. So maybe Q2, end of Q2, or going into Q3 of 2021. We'll see how that pans out, but uh, still kind of a far roadmap to achieving a live mainnet in my opinion. We'll see what happens though. And I actually forgot to mention at the beginning of this video, remember Friday's video guys, I told you nothing was going to happen from the options expiration of $1 billion for Bitcoin. It happened Friday, nothing happened. Nothing happened over the weekend. And we're just now starting to see some movement in the crypto markets and it has nothing to do with the expiration of those options. So crypto diamond strikes again. Let's take a look at Decrypt Media really quickly with this Bitcoin wrapped hitting a $101 million market cap on the Ethereum network. So it says DeFi applications rapidly growing in recent months. There's been an influx of tokenized Bitcoin on the Ethereum blockchain. The total value of tokenized Bitcoin on Ethereum just exceeded 100 million. The amount of WBTC tokens increased more than sixfold over the past month. Launched in mid-May, Ren BTC has already taken second place among tokenized Bitcoin projects. The total amount and value of tokenized Bitcoins on the Ethereum network has sharply increased since mid-May, now worth over $101 million. Now held in tokens such as RAP BTC, as I just stated, Ren BTC, HBTC, IM BTC and SBTC and others to be more specific. WBTC and similar tokens represent Bitcoin on the Ethereum network. One tokenized BTC equals one regular Bitcoin. Bitcoin can be converted into these tokens and vice versa. To achieve this, users lock up their BTC on the Bitcoin blockchain using specialized custodian services or smart contracts. After that, the corresponding amount of tokenized Bitcoin is created on Ethereum which can then be used on the blockchain. And so right now there are currently 8,200 Bitcoin that have been converted into Ethereum tokens worth around $74.9 million, according to DeFi Pulse. The third, fourth, and fifth places are occupied by HBTC, IMBTC, and SBTC respectively, accounting for 710, 608, and 512 in tokenized Bitcoins. And so we know that DeFi is really driving this surge to see scaling solutions like RAP BTC and others. And so since Bitcoin doesn't have a DeFi infrastructure that allows Ethereum token holders to lend their assets and receive passive yields, it appears that Bitcoin holders are turning to wrapped Bitcoin tokens in order to use their assets in a rapidly growing DeFi market. So there you have it. I mean, this is going to continue. This is going to continue and you're going to see really at the end of the day as dApps develop and you start to have you know, cross communications going on between blockchains like Ethereum, EOS IO. You're going to see more and more Bitcoins represented on these other blockchains. It just shows you don't need Lightning Network. Lightning is so convoluted and centralized. It's just going to cause more issues to me versus using some solution like this. So you're going to start to see more and more projects utilize these wrapped BTCs. And that's the way we're going to go with scaling people. So all those people buying Lightning node hardware and all that this is a waste of money. Lastly, let's take a look at the main topic for today, and that is Honeywell's six qubit quantum computer. 
So it looks like on June 19th, the massive industrial firm Honeywell told the public the company is now running a quantum computer that effectively leverages six quantum bits or qubits. Honeywell's machine is two times more powerful than the quantum computers designed by IBM and Google. With Honeywell revealing the new quantum computer, skeptics have already started discussing the future effects on Bitcoin and SHA-256 encryption. So even back in, and I started covering this back in 2019, Bitcoiners started talking about the theoretical attacks against the Bitcoin network after IBM revealed its Q system at the CES 2019. And so the following September, we saw the Bitcoin threat conversation and debates pick up again when the press reported on Google's quantum computer performing a calculation that deemed it's the world's most powerful supercomputer. Another big reveal invoked discussion of a quantum computer breaking 256-bit encryption and the foundations of Bitcoin's cryptography once again, and debates have started to heat up. The reason for these new conversations is due to the announcement made on Thursday from the firm Honeywell. And so according to the reports, Honeywell's new quantum computer is two times more efficient than IBM's Q System 1 and Google's supercomputer. Reporters say that Honeywell's quantum computer is a game changer, quote unquote, and is heralded for the resulting volume of quantum processing power. Now, even though Honeywell's quantum computer is quite powerful, in order to break Bitcoin's SHA-256 cryptography, it would take anywhere between 2,000 and 3,000 qubits of computing power. Estimates say that it would take computer scientists roughly a decade to even attempt to crack today's 256 encryption or projects like Bitcoin that leverage the cryptography. And I personally think that that's only an estimate. It could take less, it could take longer. I'm hedging my bets and I'm thinking it's gonna take less time. I don't think 10 years necessarily is the right way to look at this because it's all exponential. So yeah, we're at six qubits right now, but if you do more research on how these computers process this, one six qubit machine versus another may not process things the same way depending on what they're trying to do with that data. So a Google six qubit machine may not perform the same as a Honeywell six qubit machine. It depends on how they're made and the algorithms they use to actually do the computations on those qubits. So it's not as simple as it sounds. And I personally think we're talking less than five years until we see a 2000, 3000 qubit power machine. And it, again, it could only take a thousand qubit machine to do what maybe a competitor's two or 3000 qubit machine can do. So uh, something we need to keep in mind. And one other thing that is, you know, has to be spelled out here and highlighted is that cryptography is double secured or double protected. And many Bitcoin proponents have explained that if Bitcoiners don't reuse addresses, they are giving their coins more security. This is true. Andreas Antonopoulos has also said that Satoshi 2 cryptography design choices are absolutely genius. What you use as Bitcoin address is a double hash version of your public key which means that the public key is never seen by anyone until you claim it by spending the transaction. Therefore, if you use the fundamental best practice of Bitcoin, which is only use an address once, use a different address for every transaction, spend it completely every time to redirect the change to a new address, that is key, he says. And that's true. You would need to really more so worry about you know, addresses that are maybe on hard wallets, right? Where you have a final end address that you've been sending your tokens to. That, those are the only ones you would need to worry about. And so for now, they say most veterans are not at all concerned with 10 year timeline estimates that are probably much shorter with Honeywell's latest six cubic innovation. I agree. Despite this, many Bitcoin optimists believe they can safely fork the code toward a quantum resistant algorithm if they need it to in the future. Well, I guess this is cool if we don't see like a surge in adoption. So more people adopt Bitcoin um, the more kind of spread out those nodes are, uh, the harder it will be to update everyone. Um, but we'll get to that crossroad. Just something you need to pay attention to and keep your eye on as things progress in this quantum world. This is an amazing world. I'm so intrigued with quantum physics and quantum computing. It is something you guys to take a look at. But that's pretty much it for today. Shout out again to my man Aircoins Lee for the song request, Crucial Conflict. Hey! If you found this video informative, guys, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. And click that bell to receive more videos like this. I'm out of here, people. Holla!